Okay, here's 7.7 .7 for the third time because I messed up the first time and the second time it didn't record and I finished the whole lesson and I am so mad. So angry, but moving on, saying this again. So very important that in this lesson that you have a good listening ear because uh, we're talking about concept and I know you guys like to like skip stuff, but in this one, I am asking you to really pay attention, to really try to grasp the concept and not trying to be fast with it. You know, take your time, look at the notes, uh, understand the notes, and then in class, when we're doing the work, um, that you can ask questions, okay? So, yeah, there you go. Uh, 47 is a bonus question uh, for extra credit. Um, here's the intro problem. Intro. Got 8x squared plus 48x plus 72. As always, we try to do the GCF first. But so between those three numbers, 8 is a common factor. Then you factor 8 out, you have x squared. Then you got uh, 6x and 9. From here, you can factor out one more time. So two parentheses right here. What makes x squared? x times x. What makes 9? 3 times 3. And if you add them together, you'll have 6x. But hey, there are two copies of x plus 3. So why don't we square it? So this is neat. You need to write it this way. So this is not complete unless you turn it into that form. Okay, so from here... Um, let me get some from here to here. This is called a perfect square trinomial. As you can see, it's three terms, so it's a trinomial. It is a perfect square because you got oh, I'm sorry, wrong. Uh, not, not here. I am. Lining up the wrong one. Okay, anyways, there you go. It's a perfect square trinomial because this is a square and that's a square and there's three terms of perfect square trinomials. Okay. So um, part of this lesson is you have to be able to recognize perfect square trinomials. And so you have to learn it this way. And then I'm going to show you another way because having options is always nice. Okay, so, um, doing a layer. Here we go. Let's write this down. Recognize, <clears throat> recognize, slash, factor. Because we, after we recognize that it is a perfect square trinomial, trinomial, then we would need to factor it. Yeah, talking, um, doing this lesson like for three times. Oh, my throat hurts so much. <coughs> I apologize if I cough in your ears. Okay. Step one. Or so okay rewrite the terms as squared numbers step two uh, identify root numbers uh, so in this case a and b are your root numbers say for example if uh, this term right here is 81 so your root number would have been 9 Step three, I'm going to do it in a different color. Red, I guess. Step three, fill in 
with root number, with uh, root terms, I guess. Root terms, root numbers, same thing. Plus or minus, depending on the situation, 2 times A times B. Step four, fill in the formula. Ah. Okay. Which is A plus or minus B depending on the situation square. So A and B, just so that you know, these are root numbers. Root numbers. So there we go. That's our uh, steps. So let's delete those and bring this up over here, making it smaller so we can see it, use it for reference. <clears throat> okay, so here's an example. X squared plus 14X plus 49. So the question would ask, you know, is this a perfect square trinomial? And you would need to be able to um, figure it out and, you know, explain it. So the question would be, is this a perfect square trinomial? If yes, factor it. So we have to identify that it is a perfect square trinomial. Step one is rewrite the terms as square numbers. So we've got to rewrite that. Um, just the first and the last, not the middle. Okay. Step two, identify the roots. So, uh, these are the roots right here. Root numbers. In which case, let's, you know, give a name. That's your A and that's your B. All right. And then, <clears throat> uh, so that's step one. This is step two. I'm gonna show it in different color. It's confusing with the A and the B right there. Okay. Step one, step two, and then step three would be plus, in this case, two A and B. Yeah, right there. And then, then so you fill it in. <clears throat> Your A right here is X. Your B right here is 7. And then 2 times X times 7, that is indeed 14X, the middle term. Okay, we got our middle term. Okay, and then now the next one is step 4, fill in the formula. Step 4, fill in the formula. A plus or minus B, depending on the situation, square. <clears throat> So we got A um, right here. This is A, and that's B right there, just as is. A is X. <clears throat> the situation is adding. The middle term is positive. And then B is 7, parentheses squared. So basically what it's saying is that this whole thing is a perfect square trinomial. This is a perfect square trinomial, and this is how you factor it, okay? So, <clears throat> it's all in the question. They will ask you, is this a perfect square trinomial? And then you do the steps and process, and you say, hey, it is, right? And so, if it is, then um, how do you factor it? So, this is the factorization. Now, another method that I like, because <clears throat> um, I always try to give you options, so you can choose one or the other. I like the trial and error method when it comes to this. So you have x squared plus 14x. I'm just rewriting this again so it's easier to see. <clears throat> and then I go over here. I do my two parentheses. And then I do, oh, what makes x squared? x times x. What makes 49? 7 times 7. 
And if you add the sevens together, you'll get 14. <clears throat> so that creates your middle term. And, but hey, look, there's two copies of seven. So this is your final answer. Okay, so that's that. <clears throat> Example two, here we go. Maybe a, uh, why? Ah. Nine x squared minus thirty x plus twenty five. Okay, so um, we had to rewrite this as in terms of square numbers. You got three squared, which is nine. Only the first and last term. <clears throat> uh, so then this one. So that's what we have, and then. Identify the step one is to rewrite it. Step two is identify the root numbers. <clears throat> root numbers in this case, right there. This is your root number A, and that's B, right? So, step the step two, step three, right here, which is negative 2 a and b and then you fill it in <clears throat> a is 3x b is 5 and together 2 times 3 is 6 times 5 is 30. negative 30x middle terms that that is correct <clears throat> so is this a perfect square trinomial you'll say yes and then after that you're going to factor it and so you have step four right here a plus or minus b squared depending on the situation so we have <clears throat> a which is <clears throat> right here and that's b right there a is 3x b is 5 the situation is subtraction and then there you go that is your factored form okay so let's go to my favorite method, which is the trial and error method. And if you don't like that, it's fine. You have choices in life now. You can do one or the other. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Factor in two parentheses. I do one thing at a time. What makes nine? Three times three. What makes x squared? X times x. What makes 25? Five times 5 and the middle term is negative so if I do negative and negative then when I multiply negative 5 and negative 5 I would have positive 25 so so that should work so we just need to check to make sure that's correct outer and inner 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x negative 5 times 3x is negative 15x together they're negative 30x which is exactly right here which means that <clears throat> this factorization right here is correct so since there are two copies of 3x minus 5 we need just to simplify it down to that okay remember this is the answer right here not that not that whole thing you gotta simplify it down okay um, yeah, let's do one more problem. Wait. Example. 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Okay, let's just do the trial and error method. And if you like to do the other one, just pause it, do your own way, and see how that goes. And two parentheses. <clears throat> what makes 4? 2 times 2. What makes x squared? x times x. What makes 9? 3 times 3. And it's positive because the middle term is positive. And there are two copies of 2x plus 3, so that is our final answer. Next one, ex um, final one actually. Example 4. That's example 3 x squared minus 8x plus 16 okay 
two parentheses as always x squared 16 middle term is negative when you multiply negative and negative you get uh, positive 14, uh, positive 16 so it works out x minus 4 parentheses squared final answer okay so now we're gonna do a word problem over here ah, can't see take a look at this one it's pretty cool actually take a look so there's two speakers and they're both three inches high three inches high they just have a different base so they want to uh, ask uh, determine the radius of each cylinder how much greater is one radius than the other so you're not gonna solve for a radius you just want to make a comparison and there would not be an actual number for the radius it's just how much more is one than the other so that we know um, let's call this a cylinder a and that's cylinder B okay so volume of cylinder A the volume formula is pi r squared h and just so we know the h is already established is 3 okay we can just do like that and then volume of b is the same thing just with different radius so the height is still the same and right now we want to do substitution because here's the volume that's already given to us with that cylinder and this is the volume of that cylinder so substituting in got 3 pi x squared equals pi radius squared times 3 you want to do the same thing for the other one as well you got pi over here 3x squared plus 30x plus 75 equals pi r squared times 3. All right, so here's the fun part. You can cancel things out. If they're the same on both sides, it's the same thing as dividing it to the other side. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, so 1 is an invisible number. Pi divided by pi is also gone, so you're left with x squared equals radius squared. Then you take the square root, so r equals x. If you feel, don't feel comfortable, you can put that in and cancel that out. Cancel that out. x equals to r. So no number, but it's just radius of a is x inches. <clears throat> now over here, we can definitely factor something out. Um, a 3 is in common between those terms. So I'll take this 3 and I'll factor it out. You've got 3 pi on the outside. And remaining factors on the inside. Divide by 3 on all of them. You've got x squared. Um, plus 10x. Plus 25. Equals pi radius squared times 3. And then, once again, we're canceling common factors between uh, the left and the right. 3 and 3 is gone. Pi and pi is gone. Now you have <clears throat> uh, r squared equal to this. In which case, you can factor this one. Okay. What makes x squared? x times x. What makes 25? 5 times 5. Middle term is positive. And we have two copies of uh, x plus 5. <clears throat> Then after that, we take the square root. The square and the root cancels out. The square and the root cancels out, leaving you with just x plus 5 is radius b. So now we can see that radius b is 5 more than radius a, and that's all it is for that problem. Uh, canceling all this out. Uh, the last part is uh, one of my favorite factorization is called um, factor um, out the difference of two squares. Factor out uh, difference of two squares.
Ah, fine. I'll just write all the words down. <clears throat> Difference of two squares. So a squared is one, b squared is another. Difference is when you are subtracting it. So how do we get to um, this place? How do we develop that formula? So well, here's how it goes. <clears throat> Say you have this, <clears throat> and you multiply it. So that would be a squared. And that's AB. Negative AB. Negative B squared. And as you can see, look, the middle term are opposite. They cancel out. So you end up with a squared minus b squared. I'm rewriting this right here so it's easier to see. So that's your formula for the difference of squares. Now, here's a, here's a trick. If you understand the concept, you don't need to remember the formula. As you can see right here, the difference of square is a binomial. There is no middle term. The middle term makes it a trinomial. So there's no middle term. So that means that your factorization has to be positive and negative, or negative and positive, doesn't matter. When that's the case, uh, you have a positive and negative term. It will cancel out. You don't have a middle term anymore. You'll end up with a binomial. So that's the trick. <clears throat> okay, let's test this out with, a, with an example. <clears throat> Almost done. A few more, just very short example. x squared minus 9 squared. Okay. So I would do two parentheses. When I factor something out, it's two parentheses. Okay. What makes x squared? x times x. What makes... 9, 3 times 3. <clears throat> and I don't want a middle term. There is no middle term. It's a binomial. I don't want a middle term, so I had to do plus and minus. Or minus and plus. Doesn't matter. So uh, let's do a quick check to make sure that's correct. x squared, negative 3x, positive 3x. And my voice is always, no, it's almost gone. Um, that's negative 9. This right here cancels out. Then you have x squared minus 9. There you go. Same exact thing. So that means that this is the correct answer. Okay, next one. I can last for a few more examples. <clears throat> B, you got 4x squared minus 81. It is a binomial, no middle term, but I still am going to do two parentheses because when I factor out things, it's two parentheses. I'm doing one thing at a time. <clears throat> what makes four? Two times two. What makes x squared? X times x. What makes 81? Nine times nine. And there is no middle term, so plus and minus. Or minus and plus. And that is your answer. How cool is that? Right? Okay. <clears throat> um, C. Got X squared and 64. Let's do this quickly. X and X. 8 and 8. Plus and minus. Done. D. Two parentheses. <clears throat> Nine, three, and three. X squared, X and X. Hundred, ten, and ten. No middle term, plus and minus. We should have done like this. Ugh, can't be the same. No middle term, plus and minus. Okay, so that's that. Okay, let's try something else. Example five, R. This is the last example. <clears throat> okay, when you look at this, automatically you see common factors and you should always practice this. 
Are they common factors that can pull out? Yes. Between the 3 and the 12, 3 is in common. Maybe you should write this on the side. Between 3 and 12, 3 is the greatest common factor. Between x cubed and x, x is the greatest common factor. y and y cubed, y is. So your answer is 3xy. 3xy is on the outside, remaining factors on the inside. And so you divide off the remaining factor, 3xy, 3xy. Okay, there you go. 3, that's done. You get x squared, 3 minus 1, that's x2. x. The y cancels out. 12 divided by 3, that's 4. x cancels out. And then that will be y squared. Okay, now you can see if you can do any more factorization and if you can further that. And you can. Two parentheses. You got difference of squares here. Square and square. So that's difference of squares. What makes x squared? x and x. What makes 4? 2 and 2. What makes y squared? y and y. And there is absolutely no middle term, so it's plus and minus. And this is your final answer. Okay? So that is all. Please ask me if you have any questions. There are, try for yourself. Also, if you want to do that, it's in the book. Okay, good luck. And uh, just take your time to try to understand this. Um, it's actually pretty fun, don't you think?